There's actually never really a point in my life where I thought I would do anything else. I always just sort of assumed that, you know, oh, I'll just be an artist someday. Like, it's that easy. Just like, oh, yeah, no problem. My grandmother was a children's book author. Her sister was a children's book illustrator. And then their mother was also a children's book author. And then my mom was also a brilliant artist. And so I had a lot of really um, inspirational, creative people around me, especially creative women. My grandma, she wrote a lot. I should know exactly how many she wrote, but she wrote a lot of books. These are obviously a lot more um, detailed than what I do, but like there is like sort of an aspect of like comic art and like, I don't know. It's like, it, you could tell that there's a lot of consideration on the lines, which I definitely identify with. Oh, it smells so good. It smells like my grandma's house. <laughs> my grandparents always had those little like far side desk calendars. And so I would like sit at, when we would have family parties and I would just go through them and read them cover to cover. And I just loved how quick it was. I mean, it was just like, boom, here's the joke. Boom, here's the joke. And I think I just have always been really interested in sort of tapping into emotions and like just sort of like the sort of feelings people have. And I do that and that's how I come up with ideas now. I mean, that's just, I've always done that. I went to San Jose State University right out of high school um, and I was working towards a BFA. So I was there for a few years. Unfortunately, while I was in school, my mom passed away. And so it was a really hard time and I had to take a little break. But when I did go back, it was right around the time that we were submitting portfolios because in order to get into the animation and illustration program there, you have to submit a portfolio. Uh, so I submitted and it was rejected and I was devastated. And so I have um, a family friend and he was working on The Simpsons and uh, he had sort of guided me. So of course he was the first person I reached out to and I was like, Brad, I don't know what to do. I'm not really sure if I'm gonna be able to have a future in this field. And he was like, you know, The Simpsons are hiring, just try to get a job there. <laughs> I was like, there's no way. I, I couldn't even get into this art program at my school. There's no way The Simpsons are gonna hire me. And he was like, look, I will send you the character layout test. I will help you and get it sort of in, in, in ship shape and submit it for you. If I don't think that you have a shot, then I'll be honest with you and I'll let you know. And I said, okay. And he was like, the problem is you have to do it quick. You have to do it like in a week. I didn't have a light table because we were using paper at the time. So I did it all in a drafting table. And whenever I, ha when I had to animate anything, I actually used a glass coffee table and put a light underneath it so I could actually like see through the paper because I didn't have the tools to actually complete it. At the time I was a lifeguard, that was what I did. And so I remember I was getting off my shift, I pick up my phone and I have a message on my cell phone. This is a Friday and it was the producer on The Simpsons and he was like, all right Liz, we took a look at your stuff. So this looks fine, you can start Monday. So um, we'll see you at the studio, come check in with this person. I was living in the Silicon Valley <laughs> The Simpsons were in Los Angeles and I was, it was just insane. I was like, what? I mean, this was my dream job. I actually moved, moved to Los Angeles to start on The Simpsons on my 23rd birthday. I was a little baby. And I just threw all my stuff in the backseat of my car and called a friend who lived in Los Angeles and said, can I sleep on your floor for a little while? So my first day of work, I rolled up and I was like, legitimately embarrassed at how big of a super fan I was. I was like, this is gonna be so embarrassing. I'm gonna walk into this place. I had Simpsons stickers all over my car. And then I walk in and everyone was that person. Everyone that worked there had been a huge fan of the show, had just like toys and stuff all over their cubicles. Cause that's sort of what led us all to that place was just this passion for this great show. When I started on The Simpsons, I didn't really do much of my own work for the first five years or so because I was so just overwhelmed and tried so hard to do the job well that I was kind of, I let my own stuff kind of go by the wayside, which I think is pretty common. I've always loved drawing animals and I used to do little just like jokey, I don't know if I'd call them comics, but I would do little joke drawings all the time, like in, you know, on post-its or on my notebook when I was in class or whatever. And so I started doing more of that. And then, you know, my husband Colin was like, you should, you know, you should put these out there. Maybe put them online. And I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> like, I don't want to do that's terrifying. I was, I mean, again, like the self doubt, self doubt sort of stuck with me from college. And also now I was working with the most talented people in the world, these, you know, animators. And then I got over that and I was like, whatever, I'll just, I'll, you know, I'll post to Tumblr. 
And then the more attention I started getting, the more negative comments I would get. And I had to go through sort of, you know, a process of like dealing with that because I sort of had to then remember what it was like, oh, you know, not everyone is gonna be nice to you. Not everyone likes you, not everyone, people are kind of mean sometimes. And it actually ended up being a good thing because now having gone through that, it's like I haven't sort of closed off that part of my life. Now I remember it very well. And that makes me want to do stuff that is accessible to as many people as possible and not alienate anyone if I can. There are people out there who are actually dealing with just such horrible, unimaginable stuff. And there's a lot of really incredible art that speaks to that sort of pain that I feel is extremely meaningful and extremely important. And so I feel like what I'm meant to do is just give you a little break from that. <laughs> just give you a little bit of like, like just a breath of just happiness for a second. I don't mean for it to be like this like crazy commentary. I just want it to be a moment of niceness.